What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So I'm finally back from PAX Australia during the weekend. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the scheduled content while I was gone including the Bartolomeo and Cavendish showcase as well as the Legend Dragon concept video. If you guys haven't seen those yet I highly suggest go ahead and check them out. But in this video today we're going to be talking about the extra Colosseum versus Gecko Moria. So this came out a couple of days ago now so I am a little bit late to the party but I have four different teams for you guys in this video today that are able to take on this particular Colosseum uh, and all the teams in this video are relatively comfortable uh, but we'll, we'll talk about more of the teams once we get into it but before we get into the nitty-gritty of the dungeon itself like we always like to do we're going to talk about the brand new characters that have arrived here so the extra version of Gecko Moria Nothing too much has changed with this character um, in comparison to like when Neptune came out with his extra version. I feel like this character really didn't change as much as what Neptune did. Um, because I feel like the fact that Neptune boosts two separate classes being uh, Striker and Powerhouse um, for his specific orb boost is actually a pretty big change for him. But as for what Moria does, special ability, uh, we'll go ahead and change the character slot, including block, into strength, and then heals 5% of your crew's max HP and does 300,000 fixed damage to one enemy. I believe the original version still gives themselves a matching orb, but I'm not too sure if it gets rid of block orbs. Uh, and the original version doesn't heal 5% of your crew. Uh, it's pretty interesting though, you can still use this kind of character on a Bartolomeo and Cavendish team because this character is driven, works on that team very well, and the healing, the, the gradual healing that you get from specials like this is kind of good for Bato and Cavendish. Um, the, the actual Moria has double special activation as well, so make sure to limit break the Moria before you start feeding copies to this character so you can get that maxed out. And he does have a support ability. If I can click on the right button, uh, the support ability will support Perona, Oars, and Ryuma, giving 7% base stats to those characters, which is actually not too bad. He has a little bit of a low attack, only at 1318, but the main reason why you're farming this is because of the support ability of the new character along with Moria, which is going to be Little Oars Jr. Or not Little Oars Jr., sorry. This is this is the main Oars, the big boy Oars, uh, which is the extra version. So this is a Fortnite unit uh, or a story mode character. I don't remember where this character originally came from but it has been revamped into a different typing is now a dex character comes with max special already the special isn't really that useful of halving damage for one turn and does a bit of damage to the enemies it's really not important as i said the support effect of this character is why you want to farm this support only to Gecko Moria, and it states that once per quest, when you uh, are on the, on the supported character, when they use an HP recovery special, reduces all enemies' barrier and damage threshold duration by two turns. This is so freaking useful. What would have been actually really cool is if this activated more than once per quest because obviously Moria has double special activation so you can get at least two uh, two shots at Moria's special. That would mean it would reduce barriers by four and threshold by four. That would be insane. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. It's only two turns of barrier and two turns of threshold but, you know, if you are in a situation where the enemy puts up like a threshold for one turn or, you know, they have a, a one turn barrier that's really annoying to get around, you can chuck Moria on your team with this guy as a support for Moria and you can just remove it which is pretty freaking awesome if you ask me this is a really really nice character to max out um so these these extra difficulty coliseums honestly are, are pretty nice uh, they're a lot better than neo raids in my opinion because these support effects are so unique and so useful for content and the great thing about support effects is they don't actually activate enemy interrupts which is one of the big key and the main draws to these support effects so i think this is really Really, really awesome and obviously if you can't beat the really really hard difficulty you can still farm the lower difficulties which obviously have less hp and you can still farm them up because these characters will be trusty characters coming up but let's go ahead now and take a look at the actual dungeon itself all right, so getting into this, we have on stage four of the 50 stamina difficulty of Colosseum Moria, we're going to have Oars. Now, Oars has 11 million health. He has a bunch of different preemptive attacks where he resists all delay and all poison. So don't bring any of those specific effects for this fight. He also has 30% damage reduction for 98 turns. So you have to take that into consideration that 
any damage you do to him is reduced by 30%, and you're not going to be reducing that unless if you have the dual Vivi and Rebecca, which is not even on global yet. So you have to deal with that 30% damage reduction. Also, on the preemptive, he rewinds your specials by one turn, so that's kind of annoying, but you guys will see different characters in this video that will help you assist in that uh, in the special rewind. He also becomes a quick unit, so definitely having some dex characters against him is going to be uh, extremely, extremely useful. Uh, and he, he does apply a perfect barrier, after one turn as well so he does lots of really annoying defensive effects so having extremely strong characters of course are going to be helpful here uh, and obviously you guys are going to be seeing four different teams in this video so there is uh, going to be a lot of variety and uh, don't get him below 20% because he does a lot of damage to you and you essentially lose but moving on now to the final boss against Moria he has 8.3 about 8.3 million HP and he does summon some mob characters that have around 150,000 HP they have have a 99 turn of full immunity so you can't do anything towards him he has a defense up which is 4 million defense so having a, a character such as uh, the interrail recruit peckhams to remove it or just any unit that can remove blue shield defense up is going to be very very useful and almost a requirement to take down this particular boss fight he also applies 30 turns of attack down, but only to your captains. Very, very odd effect. He has four turns of resilience as well, and all of your orbs become blocked upon entering that final boss fight. And then the attacking mobs, or the mobs around him, when they do attack you, they'll apply an attack up to the enemy, so they do a little bit more damage than typical. And every single turn that Mori is alive, he's going to re-summon those mob characters. So uh, definitely taking down Moria first is the... A number one priority and once again don't get him below 20 percent because he does lots and lots of damage because he does have the resilience buff a lot of people might opt to bring uh something that does end of turn damage however if you do activate a special that applies end of turn damage then he will go ahead and remove all of your beneficial effects so once again just to reiterate, you know, don't bring end of turn damage. But you guys have seen here the Barto and Cavendish team. A very, very comfortable team. No issues with it whatsoever. So if you do have Barto and Cavendish, uh, I would suggest running this as the other four characters on the team are relatively easy to get aside from the rare recruit, uh, Daifuku. Uh, I do actually have double special activation fully maxed out on that rare recruit Daifuku, which is definitely a requirement. You need to activate his special twice in a row on that final boss fight against Mori. And then the next team you guys are seeing here is the typical team that I've seen a lot of people share on social media, which is the Snake Man team, which does utilize version 1 Law 6 Plus and V2 Doflamingo. I also use that combination in the next team as well. Just that combination is just crazy, allowing you to apply the uh, massive overkill damage that you can store on V2 Doflamingo to all of the characters on the final boss fight, as all of them do contain barriers, a good, great, and a perfect barrier and two slot barriers on the mob characters and then Mori himself has a combo hit barrier so definitely having the ability to just bypass it and then overkill damage it is going to be very very good uh though you you do have to overkill a lot though because he does have that four million defense so yeah the overkill has to be pretty significant now, in this circumstance, I use V2 Jinbei here as a unit against the uh, uh, the, the Oars fight, where he cuts health by 20%, gives us a 1.75 times attack boost. There are a couple of characters that you could replace there. I think Rare Recruit Daruma is a decent one. He is a powerhouse booster, um, and he could potentially work, but definitely having the health cut is pretty nice, allowing you to get closer to that lower HP threshold to then get the overkill damage uh, against the Oars fight. But the next team you guys are going to be seeing here is a Carrot team. Now, there are a couple of variations that I've seen people share around with Carrot. Uh, this one, as I said a little earlier, is going to also use that combination of version 1 Lore and V2 Doflamingo. Uh, kind of odd, though, because those two characters are only half boosted. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Doflamingo... Yeah, Doflamingo is also half boosted because he is a cerebral character, of course. But yeah, Lore and, uh, and Doflamingo only being half boosted they don't do much damage but this is where you have characters such as Perisparrow and Perisparrow is a really really good unit for this fight as he reduces cooldowns of your characters applies affinity and is a health cutter so he's like a perfect character to run against the Oars fight giving you all of the necessary traits that will allow you to beat it just a little bit easier uh, Carrot's kind of nice as well because she bypasses the rainbow shield percent damage reduction for 99 turns that Oars applies as well with his preemptive attack and once again of course 
course, you have the uh, the combo to kill off Moria on that final boss fight. And of course, we do have Robin on the team. I don't use Robin that often, but it's kind of nice to use her in this fight as she applies a two times attack boost to Psy and Dex characters. So that's really, really good, of course, uh, giving us good damage against the ores so that we can get that overkill against Moria. And the final team you guys will be seeing in this video is going to be a version two Akainu team, which surprisingly beat it relatively good. Um, obviously, the thing with Akainu is you have to continuously hit your six perfects. And like this is one of the most important fights where you actually legitimately have to hit your six perfects over and over and over again, um, because you you are not having the capabilities with this team to KO the boss uh, you know, on turn one, like what you could do in previous fights with version 2 Akainu. You definitely have to take your time here and make sure you are hitting your six perfects. Uh, I actually do screw up a couple times in this in this particular clip, but I was able to still KO it, which was quite good. Of course, having the, um, the um, Barry penetration maxed out on the Akainu and my friend Akainu means it, uh, it is ideal, of course, to make sure that Akainu hits last so that you are able to break the barrier and get as much damage off as possible. And remember that Moria also also has a barrier on the final boss fight so again you know make sure that Akainu is the last character to attack even though the captains do get attacked down on the final fight uh, it is it is probably the best idea to let uh, let your other characters break the barrier first and then get Akainu uh, to go ahead and uh, and get his get, get his hit in so you can hit your six perfects and then his end of turn damage is basically going to carry you um, and obviously you can use all the specials here because on the final boss fight we are once again utilizing the end of turn damage to get as much damage as possible possible and Colseem Katakuri actually makes an appearance here which is awesome to see because Katakuri uh, allows us to get guaranteed two turns of delay through the immunity buff because there are four more enemies. Colseem Katakuri is a really niche character but it's always nice to have a character such as that and allows these teams to just work you know. Uh, also having that rare recruit Peckhams is ridiculously useful as he does not only get rid of that defense buff but also does a 20% health cut that goes through the barrier against Moria. But there we go guys that's the full rundown of all the teams that you guys have been seeing in this video against the extra Colosseum Moria. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today and if you guys did make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all of the content I post on my channel including more One Piece Treasure Crew content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i will see you guys within the next video